no nation which expects to be the leader of other nations can expect to stay behind in this race for space. Hello and welcome to the Terran Space Academy, where we help you prepare for a bright future in the space industry. In this lesson, we are going to analyze the first launch of the Starship rocket system. The Starship rocket system is composed of a booster with 33 Raptor engines, 20 of those in a ring around the perimeter, and 13 in the center. The Starship second stage, also just called Starship, currently has three vacuum and three sea level engines. After a methane tank pressure problem on the first attempt, Starship lifted off the launch pad on the 20th of April 2023 and into history. Clearing the launch tower without blowing up guaranteed that this first flight was a success. Though of course this is the headline on CNN. This might be technically correct, but the title is very deceptive. The Starship did not just explode. It instead experienced a successful in-flight test of the flight termination system. Let's look at how things went. Here we see the Starship slowly lifting off and flying through the air. If we watch closely, we'll see ice falling away and pressure relief from the oxygen tank. But right here, we see something we should not. This does not look quite right. And if we look down here, we see that three engines are not operating. One of the center engines, critical for landing the booster at the end of its flight, and a pair of exterior engines. These two being out, will cause an asymmetrical force, producing a moment on the rocket. The software will need to compensate by increasing the power of some of these engines and or reducing the engine power on the opposite side. One good thing about Starship is that it can lose a few engines and still survive. 30 engines are still operating at this point. Now here at T plus 39 seconds, we see another bright flash, and we see this engine down here go out. We are now down to 29 engines operating, and the flight continues. The Starship continues to climb despite having lost over 10% of its engines. Then here at T plus 1 minute and 2 seconds, we get another shutdown. That's a total of 5 engines, with 28 still operating, meaning a loss of potential thrust of just over 15%. However, at launch the engines were only operating at about 70%. When one is shut down, the rest can be throttled up to compensate. At launch, we had 33 engines, and each one can produce a maximum of 2,300 kilonewtons of thrust. Often called 230 tons, but that's not exactly correct. This gives a total thrust potential of almost 76 meganewtons, twice the thrust of the Saturn V. If we are producing 75,900,000 newtons of thrust, and we know that the specific impulse of the Raptor engines at sea level is about 330 seconds, we can use this equation to calculate mass propellant flow. The equation reads that thrust equals exhaust velocity times mass propellant flow. We know the thrust, and we can calculate the exhaust velocity by multiplying the specific impulse by 1g. 330 seconds times 9.81 meters per second squared gives us 3,237 meters per second exhaust velocity. Now we solve the equation for the mass propellant flow. Mass propellant flow equals thrust divided by exhaust velocity, and we said that the engines are about 70% power. That takes our 75,900,000 newtons down to 53,130,000. We divide that by 3,237 meters per second, and we get 16,413 kilograms per second. So a little more than 16 metric tons per second mass propellant flow on liftoff. As the rocket climbs and burns propellant, it will get lighter, and the remaining engines will be throttled back to keep the rocket at a thrust-to-weight ratio that does not endanger the structure. A thrust-to-weight ratio of 1.2 to 1.5 is common at launch. This ratio means that the rocket is experiencing 1.5 g's of acceleration, counting the normal 1 g we all live in. The Saturn V rocket climbed to a maximum of 4.28 g's during the booster phase on the first manned flight though NASA kept it at about four for the rest of the flights. The second and third stages stayed at or below 2 Gs. 
The Starship has a launch mass with payload of about 5,000 metric tons, giving it a weight of about 49 million kilograms. Though we don't know the exact mass of this Starship. Using that figure means that Starship could lose six engines at launch and still have a thrust to weight ratio of 1.26 if the rest of the engines were throttled up to full power. At this point, the Starship has been flying for one minute and four seconds. That means it has gone through around 1,500 metric tons of propellant. So having five engines out at this point does not endanger the flight. We see some more stuttering, and though the indicator still shows five engines out at T plus one minute and 21 seconds, I count six. Two up here, one here, two more here, and the center engine. Let's watch a little more. Now we see the graphic here match what we saw earlier, six engines out. But the pattern is different, making me think that it's now seven engines out. Let's keep watching. Here at one minute and about 51 seconds, you see an engine seems to come back on. This should not be possible. Remember that these exterior engines cannot relight. They have their own rapid quick disconnect for each engine. If they shut down after launch, that's it. So we can't really trust this graphic. And the flight continues. Here at 2 minutes 45 seconds, we see the Starship start to flip. This is the point where we should start to see separation. But we don't. The Starship does not separate, like most rockets. And this turns out to be a problem. It looks like perhaps the torque of the ship moving keeps the retracting mechanism from disconnecting the ship. That's a lot of flipping, and it becomes obvious that the two won't separate. At this point, we have no choice but to do our in-flight test of the flight termination system. And there you have it. A successful FTS test blows the booster and Starship to pieces. Though we are disappointed that we don't get to see Starship attempt a re-entry, this was a tremendously successful test. The booster cleared the tower and did its job, getting the Starship up to separation velocity and altitude despite losing several engines. When the separation procedure failed, the flight termination system successfully and safely ended the mission. I would like to make a suggestion. Perhaps rather than try to flip to separate, shut down the booster, disconnect the clamps, and fire one turbo pump system only, the methane side, in a few of the engines, creating a hot gas thruster effect to move the Starship away from the booster. The booster can then start its flip back, and Starship can fire up its six engines sequentially, obviating the need for this high stress flip separation. Just a thought. Thanks for watching, and congratulations to everyone at SpaceX at Astra Proterra. The density of the atmosphere is decreasing. Max Q. Lessening stress on the vehicle. The call out. Max Q now. <laughs> Continuing to watch the first stage as we head down range. A hundred seconds into flight. Our next major activity is going to be shut down of the first stage. The Houston tracking station now acquiring the vehicle. With shutdown, we will get separation of Starship and Super Heavy and ignition of the Starship engines. When Starship separates, we light up six engines in a staggered sequence. And if all goes well, those six engines will burn for almost six and a half minutes. Onboard view from Starship. views of the Raptor engines on the second stage as we prepare for stage separation. Now after stage separation, the first stage will flip and begin a boost back maneuver for landing in the Gulf.
continuing to fly. Two minutes, 40 seconds. Let's get ready for main engine cutoff. Mr. Engine cutoff. Beginning the flip for stage separation. Right now, we are awaiting stage separation, where Starship should separate from the Super Heavy booster. Yeah, Kate, right now, it looks like we saw the start of the flip, but obviously, we're seeing from the ground cameras, the entire Starship stack continuing to rotate. We should have had separation by now. Obviously, this is, uh, does not appear to be a nominal situation. Yeah, it does appear to be spinning, but I do want to remind everyone that everything after clearing the tower was icing on the cake. 